Uh, my name is Matthew Jones, and today in this talk, I'm going to talk about negative cultural stereotypes, things that lead to prejudice, hate, and racism between different cultures. In particular, I'd like to talk about the way that artists are the ones who contribute to this negative cultural stereotype. Could it be that the most honored artists of the world, writers such as Joseph Conrad, or painters like Picasso, or even movies like Breakfast at Tiffany's, are the ones that are responsible for reinforcing these negative cultural stereotypes to the public? Now, these ideas are not new. However, I'd like to discuss them in the context of the way things have changed in the contemporary world. In the modern day of technology, artists are now able to collaborate with other artists from other countries. So we have new, a new world of multicultural artistic collaborations. Also, each culture is able to equally represent itself. So is it possible that this new generation of artists is able to step outside this shadow of old racist characterizations? Now, I'm interested in this topic in particular because of my own experience living abroad from my home in the United States. Uh, my past five years living in South Korea has given me a particular insight into, way, into the way that cultures perceive each other, the way that negative stereotypes are developed. When I first decided to come to South Korea five years ago, a lot of my friends, family, and people I knew were really worried about me. Most people from the United States have no idea about life in South Korea or even Asia in general. I would even get questions like, Matthew, in Korea, do they have electricity? <laughs> uh, in addition, the older generation of the United States still viewed Korea as they had experienced it in the Korean War. For them, things hadn't changed. I would get comments about the muddy streets in Seoul, the lack of toilets, the lack of hygiene. One man even said to me, be careful in Korea, my father lost his arm there. Now, when I arrived in Korea, I found the same to be true in the way that Koreans perceived Americans. Contrary to popular belief, most Americans do not carry guns. In fact, the first question I was asked by my recruiter when I arrived here in South Korea was, Matthew, will you be okay living without your gun? <laughs> Over time, through relationships with individuals, I learned that Everybody is an individual. People are just people, regardless of their cultural background. The problem is this lack of communication between two societies leads to a void, which is filled by negative cultural stereotypes and prejudice. Now, especially in the old days, artists were the ones responsible for teaching the public about the outside world. Before mass media, internet and TV, artists were the ones were the windows into the other, the people living outside their country. Now this, this is documented in, in Edward Said's famous book, 1978, Orientalism, in which he catalogs the way that European literature stereotypes the other as being feminine, weak, inferior, barbaric, in a colonialist manner. Now, a great example of this, there's many examples, but one great example is from Joseph Conrad's story, Heart of Darkness, the story of a European sailor, businessman, who travels deep into the Congo and experiences the jungle for the first time and some hostile, primitive African tribes. Most Europeans from the 19th and 20th century would never have traveled to Africa. So for them, this was their only perspective. And a story like this would make a further distinction between us and them, east and west. This phenomenon can be traced all the way back to the first piece of European literature, the 8th century BC epic poems by Homer, which is the Odyssey and the Iliad. It's the story of Odysseus, who travels east to fight in the Trojan War, and slowly makes his way back home. And in his adventures coming home, he encounters lots of magical, strange lands, creatures, monsters, cyclopses, nymphs, Again, we see a depiction of the other not as human, but as a cultural myth, as something different than us. Now, in the modern world, uh, Picasso is perhaps the most popular visual artist. 
And for those of you who are familiar with his work, know that he is famous for using or being influenced by African art, in particular Central African mass and traditional art. Here we have some examples. However, Picasso never traveled to Central Africa. He went to the museums in Paris. During this time, as France and Belgium colonized Africa, a lot of the artifacts were being stolen, brought back to, to Europe, and they were in museums. So Picasso would have experienced this African art alienated in a European museum, outside of its traditional context. Uh, in addition, Picasso was influenced by an art movement called Primitivism, led by painters like Rousseau, who painted imagined landscapes of faraway lands, such as jungles in Africa, or lions and strange creatures. Just as the name of the art movement suggests, Europeans viewed these, these art forms as being primitive. These cultures were primitive in their eyes. The reason why artists like Picasso and Matisse were so shocking during their time was because they incorporated what Europeans perceived to be barbaric arts into their own refined tradition of oil painting. Um, now, movies are probably the most influential art form in the modern world. Uh, ever since 1893, Edison's first movie theater, Americans and other cultures have flocked to the theaters as an escape into the other world. Now, we could probably go to the movie theater today and see examples of the other being depicted in movies. Lots of examples. One famous example here we have here is from the movie, the typical Hollywood movie, Breakfast at Tiffany's, based on the Truman Capote story from 1961. Um, and the, the lead actress is Audrey Hepburn, and she's a New York society lady. And she has a neighbor in her apartment complex, named an Asian man named Iwai Yuniyoshi. And this is played by a famous American actor, Mickey Rooney. And as you can see from the pictures, he has the, the typical, stereotypical Asian eyes, the headband or the heavy glasses, the buck teeth, and he speaks very loud, with broken English, always getting angry. This is a very cartoonish and unflattering stereotype and characterization of an Asian person. Um, and the LA Daily News famously said that even if an Asian actor had played this role, it still would have been offensive. Okay, and also music, we have lots of examples. Music is one of the oldest art forms in the world. And in popular music, we have examples of innocent pop songs using oriental motifs. Or in other examples, we have some blatantly racist songs. One example I'll give you today is from George Jones. My name is Matthew Jones, there's no relation to him. Um, and you may not know him, but in the United States, he's the most famous country music star of the 20th century. And he has a song from 1968 called The Poor Shiny. Okay. And here's the lyrics. And as you can see, you have an American singer singing in broken, satirical, Chinese broken English. So I'll read a little bit of it for you. My name is Ching Ching. I come from China. In a big, large a shippa, come along here, wind blow very hard, kick up bubbly, make a poor Chinaman feel very queer. Me bring a little gal, very much nicey, she come along for to be my wifey, she say she love me, oncey, twicey, white man come along, take, to take the little, little gal. So you have an American singing in broken English. This is a very unflattering characterization of a poor Chinese immigrant. He's shown as being poor, feminine, weak, uneducated, a second-class citizen, okay? Furthermore, the context of the song, 1968, was when the United States was fighting in Vietnam against the North Vietnamese who were allies with communist China. So a song like this would further cement the anti-Chinese sentiment in the country at the time. Now, I've given you lots of examples of the old generation of artists who would appropriate images and art of the other into their own art and make some racist and negative stereotypes of other cultures, in some cases very innocently, in some cases very, in a very racist way. Now I'm going to juxtapose this to this. What we have here is a new generation of artists who are able to collaborate interculturally and depict and show their own culture accurately. Here we have Snoop Dogg, 
America's most famous rap star, and Psy, Korea's most famous music star, collaborating on the song Hangover from 2014. In the song, both artists sing and rap in their own native language. And in the video, you can see Snoop and Psy participating in some traditional Korean customs, such as drinking games, as you can see in the picture here, eating gimbap, singing in a noribong, and even dancing with Majima. <laughs> This is no longer a world where Mickey Rooney is depicting an Asian person or George Jones is making a racist characterization of an Asian. We have an Asian man, Korean man, depicting his own culture and an American man participating in that depiction. Another great example of this is from uh, Korean singer G-Dragon's most recent album where he collaborates with rap star Missy Elliott in the song Liliria. And it's a traditional type of Amer American style hip hop song, but the producer utilizes some samples from a Korean folk song. So what you have is the perfect hybrid between East and West, old and new. Uh, interestingly, G-Dragon and Missy never met during the collaboration. The song was formed through email and phone calls. Now there's lots of movies, uh, examples of this new generation in movies also. One example I'll give you here, is from Snowpiercer, 2013. Great film. This is the quintessential multicultural film. It's based on a French graphic novel, written, screen written by an American writer, and directed by South Korean director Jun Ho Bong. The cast is very multicultural, featuring actors and actresses from maybe 20 different countries, as you can see some of them here. I recently read an interview with a screenwriter who described how the project took form. He said one day he, he got a phone call from Jun Ho Bong, who pitched the project to him. Over time, a phone call from two strangers from the other sides of the world took form to make one of the best films of the year. Now, ironically, the story of Snowpiercer is about a, group, a multicultural group of strangers who overcome their differences in language and culture to fight their way to the front of the train and hope for a better life. So we no longer live in a world where our cultures are disconnected. Now, the new generation of artists can use technology to create new multicultural collaborations and artworks. And in this, artists can accurately represent their own cultures. As individuals, we can now learn and see the world through the lens of these new artworks. We can better understand cultures and the dynamics of different cultures. And in this, hopefully, it will make a, a more empathy between cultures in the world. In conclusion, I'd like to say that we shouldn't consider our, our artworks and our inventions as special just because they're new or novel. Over time, we should judge our creations by how they contribute to social progress and a better understanding and communication between the societies here on Earth. Okay, thank you.